Hi, Alyssa. Hi, Jordan. How are you? I'm doing great. How are you? Doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, is this our fourth chat? Yes. Wow. Crazy. Yeah. I keep flying. <laughs> I know. We're in June already. Fourth chat. And I can't keep track of it. So, well, with further, without further ado, um, let's just jump right in. All right. Let's see. So welcome to Books and Bindings. My name is Jordan Nyland. And my name is Alyssa Zavalliano. And this is a space where we chat about reading, writing, and the faith that binds us as friends and as Christians. We want to exemplify Christ in everything we say and do. We hope that our conversations are encouraging in your walk as a reader, a writer, and a believer. So let's start chatting. <laughs> I always laugh after I say that. I don't know why. <laughs> It's a funny word. <laughs> it is. I don't say chatting very often. Yeah. In my day to day. Well, what tea are you drinking today, Alyssa? That's a great question. Um, and I have to admit, I'm an imposter tea drinker today, as this is hot chocolate. <laughs> Ooh. Mm -hmm. Yummy. What kind of brand of hot chocolate? Ooh. Is it the Nestle I one? No, I I don't remember. It's actually peppermint hot chocolate. That's so um, good. Yeah, and it comes in like the green. It's like a oblong pack, or no, not oh, oblong, yeah. like a rectang rectangle. Get my shapes right. Um, and it's like green. I forget the the brand, but it's very good. Yummy. I like yeah, what your. Are you? What are you? Drinking? I am drinking out of my wifey mug. It is cinnamon spice. It's really good. I'm not gonna take a sip though because it's super hot. So I'll take a sip in a few minutes, but it's really good. Sounds good. I love cinnamon. Yes. <clears throat> so we have some pretty exciting or well, an exciting thing to talk about coming up next that we're going to dive right in. Yeah. So this past week, we conducted a poll on Instagram and we asked all of you what your favorite genres were. So we had eight different categories. We had, um, uh, oh my goodness. Uh, middle grade. Yes. Friends lit. Um, mystery. Romance. Historical fiction. Romance. Um, Fantasy. Yep. Mystery. Did I say that? Yeah. Um, so we had eight. <laughs> <I guess. and laughs> if we if we missed one, that's okay. We decided that we would pick our favorite books from the top two winners. And the top two winners were, out of all of your votes, historical fiction and fantasy, <laughs> which I'm really excited Whoa. about because historical fiction is my favorite category or favorite genre. Mm -hmm. And I have a feeling that yours is fantasy. Yeah, it's like a tie between fantasy and historical fiction. Uh -huh. I think I read more. Honestly, I probably read more fantasy, even though lately it's been historical fiction, but I love them both, I think, equally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm so excited because I don't know. I mean, I have a feeling what some of your favorite fantasy novels are, but I have no idea what your favorite historical fiction novels are. So I'm excited to talk about this. And if anybody's watching or for all of you watching, if you could comment what your favorite historical fiction or fantasy novels are, maybe we can check them out. It's a great idea. Yeah. I wonder if you have any in common too. Yes, that would be cool. <clears throat> so Jordan, should we do fantasy or historical fiction first? Let's do, do fantasy. Story? Perfect. That's on top. So it's perfect for okay, me. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> so would you like to show your books first since I think I have more? <laughs> <laughs> sure. So, um, well, obviously I had to bring out, oh, so I have four I picked four fantasy and four historical fictions. So, um, Endlewood and the Earth Treader by somebody named Alyssa Zvalianos. She seems pretty cool. Um, these <laughs> hold a special place in my heart. I am just so proud of you. And I, I don't like to say that I'm biased because they genuinely are like tremendous works of fiction and, or fantasy. And I think everybody should read this. There's a girl in my church. Um, I bought her a copy of the Earth Treader when it first came out. And she was like, 
this was so good. And she talks to me about it all the time. And so every time you come out with a new book, she's like, I have to get it. It's so cute. So you're inspiring young minds. Thank you, Jordan. You didn't have to do that. This wasn't planned, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> That's so sweet. Thank you. No, but it's so true. I love it. Thank you. Do you have other fantasies? Um, yeah. So add, okay. I, <clears throat> I don't know if this falls under fantasy. I'm going to say it does. I don't have a ton of fantasy books, um, but the ones that I do have, I love. And so I'm not a huge Stephen King fan. I don't like the horror thriller genre, but his book, 11-22-63, it toes the line of fantasy and historical fiction, I think. Um, so basically the whole concept of the book is a man goes back in time to try to stop the Kennedy assassination. And so he, there's this diner and it's kind of like a time travel thing where he can go back to um, 1963 and tries to stop the assassination. It's so, so good. It's a thick guy. It's like a thousand pages, <laughs> yeah. but it is so good. And yeah, I highly recommend this. I, the last time I read it though, was in high school so I don't remember if there's language or um like sexual things knowing Stephen King there probably are so that's the only caveat to that but the whole concept of the novel and the way it was a page turner I absolutely loved it that's really cool I've never read anything by Stephen King but I've seen some movies based off of his books okay. like The Green Mile and I think was Shawshank Redemption another one by him mm -hmm. I think um and The Green Mile had fantasy elements to yes. it which I was so surprised when it happened because I didn't know what to expect I was, like, <laughs> well, I was like whoa I thought Stephen King wrote like horror but yet here's fantasy elements so yeah I'm not surprised that he actually probably wrote more books than what I even realized with fantasy yeah. elements in it so that's pretty cool yeah I highly recommend this one the green mile is also really good too a little darker yeah sure. really good storytelling as well mm -hmm. yeah and then last but not least, I love the Harry Potter series. And my favorite Harry Potter book is Order of the Phoenix um, because I like Dolores Umbridge, <laughs> which is a really unpopular opinion. <laughs> but, like, <laughs> I, okay, I don't, I despise her character, but that's why I love her so much. I just think JK Rowling does a really good job of writing bad characters well. So, like my all-time favorite Harry Potter character is Draco Malfoy because <laughs> I love his character arc. And um, I think Dolores Umbridge, she just comes in and causes trouble. And so you hate her, but I think she's written really well. So that's why. <laughs> Amazing. You hate to love or you love to hate her. Yes, I exactly. think that's like, yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. She's like, Ugh, like I can't even yes. <laughs> there's so many but that's a good one really good uh -huh. and I think what's really cool too is sometimes when there's movie adaptations they don't translate as well as the books and I feel like with Dolores Umbridge's character it translated perfectly it's like so good ugh, every time she shows up you just cringe but I I really appreciate um how JK Rowling wrote her yeah no yeah. for sure I think it was like tremendous storytelling the whole series like is I just think she's a genius in my opinion I'm like how'd you come up with all that um so good choices Jordan yeah talk about world building it's incredible the imagination I know it astounds me every time I need to probably do a reread of Harry Potter I've only only read them once so mm -hmm. yeah but, sorry what no I just said they're good oh yeah no they are for sure um I didn't add Harry Potter to my fantasy shelf, um, but that's okay because they're great, but I do have some other ones. And some of these that I'm gonna mention, I would say kind of toe the line of fantasy in middle grade, kind of, they can have a crossover, um, but we didn't specify YA or middle grade, we just said fantasy. So I feel like I can get away with that. Um, all right, the first up is Penny Royal Academy. Um, by M. A. Larson, and these it's a trilogy. So this is the first book, and they're written by a man who wrote man. The main character is female, and so I was really su pleasantly surprised because I don't read many male authors. Not because I'm biased towards female authors, it's just 
I just don't have many male authors, I guess, on my bookshelves. Um, but these are fascinating. They're great. It's kind of like, a, I guess you could say a Harry Potter-ish um, where there's like princesses and princes training to be, I guess, like princesses and princes, princes. Um, and they have like um, tasks and things. It's been so long since I've read these, but I remember loving them. So I would highly recommend those. Um, another series I really like is the Wild Island Chronicles. This is oh. book one. Um, I like the cover. Yeah, isn't it kind of cool? Cute. Yeah. But like the dragon finger. Um, the first book is pretty slow compared to the other two. This is also a trilogy um, by Janet Lee Carey. And they're really good. Um, I think content wise are pretty good too. These are more YA, whereas Penny Royal Academy is probably more middle grade. Um, but yeah, so these are really good if you like dragons and adventure. Um, another one is Wildwood Dancing. This is kind of more like a fae, um, yeah, like five adventurous sisters, four dark creatures, three magical gifts, two forbidden lovers, one enchanted frog. Yeah, there's just a lot in here. So <laughs> this is a fun one. I read it a long time ago, but I remember really liking it. I love um, that I don't know any of these. <laughs> These are like oh, my mind. They're from like my childhood. I read a lot of these. Nostalgia. Um, yeah, yeah. Love it. Um, <clears throat> I've posted about this on my book page, but the Miss Mantha Chronicles by M A or M I M I McAllister, and I'm a huge fan of talking animals. So this is great. It's awesome. Middle grade Christian themes um, with squirrels and <laughs> creatures and all the above. It's so cute. <laughs> I literally love these. I did my fourth grade book report on this book. Um, so it has impacted me for many years, but I definitely need to reread. And this is a little PSA. If anyone has the fifth book somewhere and knows how to get it, please let me know because it's currently like priced to be like over $200 on the internet. Can't afford that. So <laughs> oh my goodness. I remember you posting about that a while ago. Yeah, you still I, haven't found it? <laughs> no, they. It's like it's not. Um, it's not um, print, printed. But there is actually. I do follow a Facebook group. So actually, guys, if you are looking for the fifth book of this, there's a Facebook group. I forget what it's called, but I can do research if you're curious and I can let you know. But they're doing reprints of all of these with new covers, and eventually we'll get to the fifth book. So I just have to be patient. Um. Sorry, Jordan, I'm almost done. I have <laughs> Ella Enchanted, which is a classic um, about a girl who is cursed with the gift of obedience, um, which is the movie and the book are vastly different. So if you have seen the movie, please don't base that on this book. They are literally two different stories. Um, the, the main antagonist is very different. It's like not even the same. Um, this book helped get me through a lot of tough times in high school. Yes, I read this in high school. Um, probably should have read it in middle school, but really, 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 really good. I and actually just bought that book, like literally a week ago. Um, I grew up loving the movie. That's honestly one of my top movies of all time. It's so good, even though it's nothing like this. <laughs> I've heard, but I'm excited. I, I wonder why they made the movie so much different than the book. Do you know why? I don't. I really have no idea. Um, in some ways, there's a lot of similarities. Like, don't get me wrong. They're, Ella is the same. Ella Frell is the same character. She has the same curse. Um, but the way that they've portrayed it with, like, I really think the antagonist is the main. I don't know why they did that. I don't know why they changed it. It's a really good question. Um, maybe the author. Maybe Gail knows. Maybe we can talk to her. <laughs> maybe we should interview her. <laughs> yeah, we should. <sighs> well, I'm glad that you got the book. Yes, um, I'm excited. Me too. I want to know your thoughts. And then the last but not least, which is probably at the top of my fantasy. Oh, wait, no, sorry. I have other, <laughs> I have one more after this, but these are the, um, the books of Bayern. I had to do all four because the covers are just so beautiful. Um, the first book is The Goose Girl. Really, really good. Books of Bayern. I can't stress these enough. Very fantastical. Content is great, at least that I remember. I read these years ago. Um, 
Shannon Hale is probably one of my favorite fantasy authors. Also, you could check out her um, Princess Academy series, which is like middle grade. These are young adult. So good. That's all I can say. Just, I need to reread them again. <laughs> I love it. It's so good. And then last but not least, which this is no surprise to anyone, I have the Cimmerillion and then I have Lord of the Rings, which goes without any explanation. <laughs> I just started reading, actually, I just finished the Fellowship of the Ring a couple days ago, and I, it was nothing like I expected. I have been avoiding reading them for the longest time because fantasy isn't my favorite category or my favorite genre, um, but I really loved Tolkien's, Tolkien, is that how you say his name or is it Tolkien? I think it's Tolkien, but I've been saying Tolkien for years, so I really don't know, but I kind of transition to Tolkien. Mm -hmm. I think I, yeah, I think I go back and forth. But anyways, I love how witty his dialogue is. Mm -hmm. And um, I did, I did zone out a little bit at certain parts, like when they were traveling and they're describing things. But I love the, the impending doom, I guess, of like, oh, something's chasing them. They don't know what it is. And they kind of know what it is. But um, yeah, I'm really excited to read the rest of them. I can't wait to hear like your final summary synopsis. Yeah. And just how you feel about it. Because my favorite is The Return of the King, the very last book. Okay. So the first one is great. Second one is great. They're like tied for first or second place. Mm -hmm. But I don't know. I think The Return of the King is just the culmination of all the evil being like vanquished. And like you see, it's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. So I'm so excited that you're reading them because then I feel like we can like gush and talk about yeah. it, even if I'm the one gushing. <laughs> we should, once I finish all the books and the movies, we should have a books and bindings episode just about Lord of the Rings. I think um, somebody recommended that. Tabby. I think yes, it was Tabby. Tabby. Yes. Mm -hmm. So thank you for that suggestion. We, hey, Tabby. <laughs> <laughs> we definitely want to do that. I think it's a great idea. I will probably start crying somewhere in the middle of it. <laughs> then, <laughs> that's pretty accurate but oh wow so, I know so that concludes my <laughs> my fantasy section um are we moving on to uh historical fiction yes historical fiction so I only chose four but I have a lot of favorite <laughs> historical fiction novels um so these are my top four let's see what should I start with I'm gonna start with probably my all-time favorite historical fiction novel which is The Help by Catherine Stockett this is such a good novel um if you don't know it's about a girl who um she how do I explain this? <laughs> Sorry, my, my <laughs> mind just went completely blank. <laughs> okay. I book, but I can't remember what it's about. Um, so basically there's a white woman and she wants to give the black maids in her town or in her county a voice. And so secretly she compiles all of the black women's stories about the families that they take care of and the houses that they clean. And then this book gets printed and of course it's all anonymous and these women in town are reading the book and they're like, oh my gosh, this story is about me. Um, and it just, it, it's so, so good. I cannot recommend this highly enough. Um, sadly, I think this is the only book she ever wrote. Mm -hmm. So I hope she comes out with something again soon, but this is amazing. The movie is also amazing too. I've seen the movie, haven't read the book, but it is on my shelf. So yeah. I will read it soon. <laughs> I would say, I don't know what's more my favorite, the movie or the book. They're both, in my opinion, they're both phenomenal. Well, that's good. That's yeah. good. Mm -hmm. And then another of my favorite historical fiction books is Water for Elephants by Sarah Gruen. So this is about a man, a young man who finds out his parents passed away. And so he decides to quit college and he joins the circus and he falls in love and um, takes care of an elephant. And it's, it's just wholesome and sweet, but also um, there's uh, mistreatment of some of the animals. And so I, I don't wanna give anything away, but um, eventually justice is served and it's, it's great. The movie is also great too, but I think the book is better, yeah. I knew they came out with the movie maybe I did but yeah it's with Reese Witherspoon and Robert Pattinson okay 
Yeah. Okay. Maybe I didn't know then. Super good. And then this book came out either this year or last year, The Second Mrs. Astor by Shauna Abe. This is a book about um, Madeline Astor, who is the widow of John Jacob Astor, the richest man on Titanic. So this follows her point of view of being married into this extremely wealthy family and the, how the public thought of her and the ridicule she got from them. And then also the aftermath of being a survivor on Titanic and kind of that title that she had to carry her whole life and how the public thought of her after that. So this was very, very good and clean too. There was, it's, I wouldn't really call it a romance novel, but I mean, it does follow their marriage a little bit, but no language, very clean. So highly recommend that. That's on my list. <laughs> yeah. I had to so read that good. one. It's one of my favorite reads this year. So, so good. Good. And then the last one, sorry if I'm going really fast. No, you're um, perfect. I need to slow down. <laughs> <laughs> the last one is The Nightingale by Kristen Hanna, which Alyssa and I read together during 2020. I think it was when COVID first started. I think so. Yeah. yeah. And we were like, we need, we need human interaction. And so we had a book club with just the two of us and we read this and we were a mess at the end. Oh my gosh. <laughs> so, so good. Really great storytelling. Um, an example of a novel where you don't know, ah, it's so, so good. You don't know what's going to happen until the very end. And you think, you know, what's happening. You think, you know, who the narrator is, um, you know, like the flashbacks and um, it started in the present day and then it went back to World War II and yeah anyways so so good I love it I feel <laughs> well, like that words aren't coming easily tonight <laughs> you're, doing, you're doing great really okay. I'm, I'm like soaking it up I wish I just had my pen and paper uh, so I could take notes but I'll have to rewatch this and and be like oh yeah these are the books Jordan suggested but no you're doing Ow, I just hit myself. <laughs> You're doing great. We're both messes tonight. Oh, I, guess. I think it's a combination of it was a long weekend and the apartment is super hot right now. Oh. <laughs> so I just feel like I'm sweating. Anyways, <laughs> enough about me. Well, um, I'm glad you ended on the book you ended on because that is actually one of mine as well, which is funny. Um, this book is phenomenal. And I would say... So I've loved historical fiction for a little, like a little while now, but I just never knew what to read because I was always afraid of content. And even reading this, I was like, oh no, like what kind of content is in it? You know, I was worried, but it was very well written where it didn't feel like there was anything explicit. Even mm -hmm. though we knew some terrible things happened, it was just written in a way that didn't feel that way. You know, like you didn't really get immersed into the super nitty gritty. Right. Um, and yeah, her storytelling is impeccable. So this has definitely earned like a top, a top seat because prior to this, I'd probably only read like a few historical fiction, like The Book Thief, which I thought was pretty good, but it wasn't my favorite. Um, so this slowly or quickly became one of my favorites. Um, another one I really love is the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society. The movie is also really good as well. Um, I think there's a debate about what people like better. I don't know why, um, but I think I like the book probably maybe a little better than the movie. I'm not sure. Um, but this one was really, really good. And I think a lot of it, I'm not sure if it's all, uh, how do you pronounce it? Epistolary? How, is that how you? Oh, I would, this is probably the wrong pronunciation. I was saying epistolary. <laughs> now that I'm saying it out that's loud, I'm like, <laughs> that's not correct. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds better than what I'm saying. Um, I'm sure it's epistolary. Yeah, it might be. And I actually, I totally forgot. It's been years since I've read this, but looking through it, it looks like it's all letters. So Jordan, you might not like this, but. Um, <laughs> <laughs> They're not my favorite. No, nah, that's okay. The story is really good. So you actually may prefer the movie better than the book. Um, cool. But the I really liked it and I like letters. So I'm, I doesn't bother me I guess with that style but I really enjoy it um and then these ones are going to come as no surprise to anyone who knows me um I love Amanda Dykes whose waves these are um this blew me away because I'm not really a like a fan I'm not to say I'm not a fan but I don't really read a lot of contemporary history historical fiction and this takes place in Maine 
in the year, um, let's see. Well, it fluctuates between 1944 and what's the other time period? I think in like the 2000 something, I'm not really sure. Anyways, I can't find it. So it's kind of fluctuates between World War II and present day. And um, it's in Maine. And I've never really in, like read a lot of stuff about New England or just America. And I love America. I'm happy and proud to live here. But um, yeah, this took me by complete surprise. And I loved it so, so much. Um, another one, Set the Stars Alight, which Jordan, I know you've read. So good. It's so good. So whimsical, so magical. Um, this takes place in Europe and the in the UK. Um, just so beautiful. The storytelling is so great and it fluctuates between present day and then the past day of like the early 1800s. Um, and so like when Napoleon was doing his thing. So this is really great, really beautiful. And I would say the past the past um, storyline, the one, the second one that's happening in the past is probably one of my favorite storylines I have ever read. So it beautiful. Breaks my heart in the best way. Mm -hmm. Can't even explain to you. Um, I'm, sorry, I'm interrupting no, go, you. Go, please. I love how the storylines eventually come together and weave. It's so, it's very well done. I have no idea how she writes like that. I know, I know. Um, yeah, it, it like blows my mind. And plus like this cover is like my absolute favorite. So pretty. It's beautiful. Um, and then my last one, which I haven't finished yet, but I'm very close to finishing because I've read most of it. So I feel like I can add this to my list. Um, Yours is the Night, which is a World War I historical fiction novel. Um, and I just think, I just, I've fallen in love with history this year more so than I ever um, thought I did. And just the significance of the poppies and World War I and the struggles of these characters, just so real, so good. Um, Amanda just never ceases to amaze me. And I'm so excited. I already pre-ordered her <laughs> book coming out in December, All the Lost Places, which will then be added to my favorites of historical fiction. I can already tell. Um, <laughs> so, so yeah, those are, those are all mine. Mm. Yeah, thank you all for voting in our little poll. We should do more polls like this, even if it's not an entire episode, it might be fun to include you guys in our future chats. Yeah, I would love that. And like next time, if we do another poll too, we should exclude fantasy and historical fiction. So we have to do one of the, the okay, other. That's a good idea. <laughs> and we should include other genres like memoirs or yeah. I don't know, other yeah. things. Christian fiction or Christian living, mm -hmm. yeah, poetry. I don't know. That yeah, would be. I fun. totally forgot about poetry. <laughs> <laughs> There's so many genres. <laughs> no. Oh my gosh. Okay, great ideas. All all noted. Um, but yeah, definitely love to have more interaction with like our our fans. <laughs> we don't have a lot of subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you guys for following us. Yeah. Um. Oh, but before we go, we should do a quick little brief, um, a brief of what next month's chat is going to look like. Um, so I do want to mention for all those who are listening that um, July 1st is when pre-orders open for Jordan's first, her debut of Marzipan's First Christmas. So mark your calendars because July 1st is going to come super quick. Um, and she's worked so hard. Jordan, you've worked so hard. I don't want to talk about yeah. like you're not here. Um, you have worked so hard on this. I've seen you um, diligently just trying to figure it all out. I know the whole publishing thing is kind of a fiasco in itself, but it's so rewarding and so fun. And I can't wait to see your finished product out in the world on the shelf. Um, and for those who are listening, September 12th, right? Did I get that right? Mm -hmm. All right. September 12th is the release day. So we'll be doing um, more talk about this in later chats, but just keep it on your, ra your radar that pre-orders open by the time that you're going to watch next month's chat, pre-orders are going to be live. So get on it. <laughs> Exciting. And I'm super excited. We are interviewing my illustrator for Marzipan's First Christmas. So that might be the next Books and oh, Binding yeah. video that you watch. 
Yeah, we'll see. But Jess Burcham, we're going to have her on here. Super excited. That's great. I have no idea anything about her except that she draws really cute bunnies. Um, <laughs> She's wonderful. So I'm excited. Very excited to meet her. Um, yeah. And so that's kind of all we have for right now. I'll just say stay tuned because we do have some other great things planned. And um, yeah, we hope you enjoyed hearing about our books. <laughs> I love that this was a more laid back chat. Yeah, sometimes it's nice just to chill and talk about the books that you love to read. <laughs> so true. I know. And I think this will be our shortest video yet. So <laughs> what do you think it is? Like 25 minutes, maybe? Maybe 25, 30. Okay. Who knows? We'll see. Once I, I know that is short for us. We, um, we're trying. We're working on it. <laughs> There's just so much to talk about. <laughs> we just love literature. <laughs> yeah. Oh, this was so fun, Alyssa, as That's always. Great. Love it. Love you. Love, love books. you. Too. Yep. We'll chat again. <laughs> <laughs> Bye.